You've got mail. Welcome back to Actor Frontline, a history shadow. As you know, I have been missing for like three months since the last video. Then there's a good reason for it. Well, of course, I'm, I'm at this point, I'm in like grade 11. If I'm not wrong, yes, for sure, 11. I'm, I, I didn't fail my test, pretty sure. And yeah, everyone knows. During these years, I have a bunch of work universities up ahead. I got works and more work and work to do. I got lit, I got like less time and less time to make videos. And so at last I try to make shorter videos and drop the midway part two for now. It seems that that doesn't go, that didn't go well at all. I make progress for like three minutes into the editing and that's pretty much it. No more time left to make more. So I was like, how about I, make an even shorter video like this one over here that you're watching. I bet it's gonna be like three or four minutes. Trust me, I will make it the shortest I can. And yeah, well, this is like an even smaller series than the, than the first one. Because this time we'll be discussing just a single war vehicles, maybe ships, aircraft, or tanks, I don't know. But definitely for sure, this video is about the Sherman Firefly. The Sherman Firefly, when we have to talk about this tank, of course, you have to go back all the way to 1943 in the British War Department. In 1943, saw the new use of German heavy tanks, and that is the famous Tiger I. The Tiger I possessed a front armor as thick as 100 mm and the new cannons uh, known as the 88. The new German Tigers are impenetrable from the front from any Allied anti-tank guns and tank guns. It strikes fear into the soldiers and tankers of the Allied powers. The British tried to find a new solution to deal with this monstrosity of a tank, and so they tried to use a new gun on their tank. Thankfully, at the time, the British possessed a brand new 76.2mm 17-pounder cannon. These new gun, compared to the normal gun that they have at the moment, the barrel is absolutely massive, it's much longer, and it has a penetration all the way up to 180mm. However, there's a catch in putting the new 76.2 17-pounder gun into a tank. The tank that the British Army possessed at the time is the M4 Sherman. And as you know, the M4 Sherman only possessed a 75mm gun. When compared to the Tiger, it is an unfair fight. The 75mm cannot penetrate the 100mm front armor at all because the penetration power is terrible to say the least and the Sherman is originally designed for infantry support not anti-tank role. So the British wet their new 17 pounder cannons trying to put it onto a Sherman. At first it sounds like a perfect idea but of course there's a catch. With the new gun 
As you know, the Sherman only used 75mm cannons, and the round that this gun used is relatively small when compared to the new 17-pounder rounds. The new 17-pounder rounds, when compared to the Sherman 75, is absolutely massive. The, the length of the, the round is much longer, and the breach that required to load this new round is absolutely massive. When you compare a breach of the old Shermans compared to the new breach of the 17-pounder, it looks like the crew have much less space to sit in the tank. And it is much harder to load around into the breach. With this problem, they're trying to make space for the new gun. So they find a solution. So they get rid of the radio operator and put the radio in the bank in the back of the turret. They cut the hole in the back of the Sherman turret and have a radio stick out the back. And also with the radio out of the compartment of the tank, now they can store more ammunition for the new 17 pounder. And with the radio in the back, now they have more space to load the round in. But still, in practice, the Firefly have a terrible rate of fire compared to the normal Shermans due to the massive size of the new rounds and the breach almost took up the entire space of the turret. However, in practice, the Sherman Firefly did absolutely well in terms of armor penetration. Finally, the new Sherman Firefly was adopted into service in 1944. It first saw combat during the battle for the city of Normandy in D-Day. And during this battle, the Sherman Firefly quickly gained its reputation as the German tank killer. The new 17-pounder can easily penetrate the front armor of the German Tigers and even Panther tanks. It quickly earned a reputation as a fearsome tank from the Allied powers by from the Axis tankers. These new guns can penetrate the Tiger front armor with ease. However, it still struggled the same problem during testing, and that is the rate of fire and the time the loader have to took to load this ammunition into the barrel and fire the gun. It really took a toll on the tank crews. However, in the end, the Firefly came out to be a perfect tank to engage and destroy the new German tanks. Sadly, the Firefly lifespan in the army was relatively short due to the fact that after the war, it was immediately withdrawn from, from frontline service and was replaced by the Centurions around five years later. The Sherman Firefly might just be a normal tank that is once in service during World War II in the 1944-45. This tank may not look special at all compared to the much more famous tank such as the Tigers, maybe all other tanks that you can think of. But what is really special about this tank? Well, the Firefly is special because it at first, of course, it did use the new cutting edge gun from the British. But secondly, the one that really made me feel that the Firefly is special is that it's the result of the struggle during war times. During, war during war times, when you met new threats, you don't have such the amount of time to deal with it. You need to find the quickest solution and to make it come out well. The Firefly is the perfect example of this. The Sherman is definitely not a good tank to put a 17-pounder in, but they did it at last they finally find a way to put it in and it did work well and well it did show that during wartime nothing is perfect even the best tank will have its flaw Finally, I would like all the viewers that have followed this channel, even though that I have gone silent and out of sight for like maybe around three months for now, but 
I will never stop making videos. I will try my best even though I don't have the time to make it. I will always try to make videos and keep this channel alive. Thank you to all viewers and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.